We're harnessing ancient tested alchemy and bringing it into a 21st century model. We're not trying to interfere. We're not trying to deteriorate. We're not trying to improvise and, and make things weird. We're really just trying to harness mother nature so our body can respond to that beautiful, poetic intelligence. All right, my new dear friend, Shervin. My sister, Mona Lia. Welcome to Rooted in Wellness. It's great to be here. So this podcast is all about ancient rituals in our modern day world. And I really want to get people connected to the things that help them feel rooted, whether it's to themselves, their health, or their inner wisdom to heal. So the first question is, what are the three things that help you feel just extremely rooted in yourself or in your life and why? Uh, Number one, gratitude. You know, and I know that's played out so much, but it's such a powerful force. Mm. You know, and the gratitude goes deeper than just the lexicon or the nomenclature of what gratitude means. It's really feeling like your purpose is solidified by your love and your intention, and you're really building the fabric of that life around you. I believe in the law of attraction, and gratitude is the almost the rooted position point to bring that law of attraction to fruition. And, um, you know, I offer myself deep, copious amounts of mm. gratitude all day long. I'm loving myself. Um, I'm intentional with it. Um, you know, I'm, I, you know, I tap into the child. You know, mm. it's interesting once you go through certain corridors of life of, you know, going into the dark night of the soul, going into the enigma of your purpose and why you're here. You know, you have revelations and those revelations ultimately for me personally, it brought me back into the child, mm. the wonder, the imagination, the harmony that it brings. As we get older, we start to solidify in our position and our way of thinking. And that solidification we were talking offline, you know, doesn't allow for malleability. And if you're not malleable in this ever changing event horizon we call life, we're going to be meeting ourselves against a brick wall. Absolutely. Right. And so I like to navigate through that from there. Then I'm building out, you know, disciplinary actions that are rooted in discernment. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's not like I have to do something or I don't know why I'm doing something. The instant gratification thing that we're seeing on social media where there's just so much noise being thrown in this direction. Algorithms. It, right. Yeah. Just yeah. not nonstop. <laughs> it's, it's insanity. I, I had to turn that off. I can't, I can't just allow my soul to get cross mingled with it because it's hypocrisy on what I believe in for internal health. You mm -hmm. know, if we want to mm -hmm. be in a parasympathetic state, I can't hear 10,000 things at once and then not dig deep on them. Right. Sure. I want to dig the well of information. I want to find the aquifer so we can survive in the desert. You know, I don't want to just pick all these little things. And so for me, having discipline around my discernment. Mm -hmm. And discernment for me is really evaluating what resonates with me in every cell of my body, in every part of my being. I'll go into the spiritual aspect of it. I'll go into the science aspect of it. I'll sit with it. Maybe I'll do some emotional healing techniques. Maybe I'll tap in, muscle test, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I'm taking a full course you know, offering to be able to experience that and then make the right decisions. And then from there, it's putting it into play, you know, right, creating right. your rituals and your non-negotiables and really looking at the pillars of, you know, you know, lifestyle choices around that, that brings in and attracts, you know, what, you know, you desire for yourself and the people around you. Mm. I want to hover on the gratitude aspect because I think it's a term that we use so kind of flippantly, like, mm. oh yeah, gratitude here, gratitude there. Yeah. But you described it as living in gratitude, loving yourself. Is this a practice that you cultivated over years? Is it something that you have just been able to remind yourself of daily? Because I think for all of our listeners, it's easy to start the day with a gratitude practice and the day with gratitude, yeah. but to really embody the feeling of gratitude and coherence throughout the day, yeah. like you're constantly shifting from unplugging from the distraction and pain and suffering into, <sighs> ease it's just what it feels like so tell us about how you got there yeah just the way you portrayed that i can feel that <laughs> right 
you know, I learned at a pretty early age that, you know, there's certain things we can intellectualize, right? Mm -hmm. It's an intellectual perspective, or I can learn and memorize and offer myself that kind of, you know, brilliance through being an intellectual, but it's the embodiment, it's the practice, it's the chopping wood, carrying water, becoming enlightened, go to sleep, wake up, chop wood, carry water. The embodiment practice is what the Taoist immortals of TCM did. It's what mm -hmm. the Ayurvedic masters did. It's what the Persian mystics did. It's what all of the deep level fundamental thinkers were doing. And so I don't want to sit here and recite information and regurgitated stuff. I need to practice it. If I don't, I'm lowering my immune system. Mm -hmm. I'm lowering my power. I'm lowering my electrical energy. All of those things are real. We know now through the biology of belief and understanding what epigenetics is, I I mean, Dr. Bruce Lipton is a good friend of ours. You know, I wow. was introduced to him and the theta training and psyche at such an early age that I realized that it, the implementation of embodiment and practice is really where it, where everything begins. And so if I could learn everything, but if I'm not doing it, I'm actually creating suffering. And so gratitude has to be part of a real mental, emotional, physical embodiment. Mm -hmm. And so for everyone, that could be different. Mm -hmm. You know, so it doesn't have to look a certain way. We're all yeah, unique yeah. in our own applications, the way we approach life. For me, it is, you know, getting my feet in the earth. For me, it's really, you know, looking at my life and through a microscope and not judging experiences, but evaluating them. And that's also a part of my Rosicrucian practice is where I'm going to sleep every night and I'm reviewing mm -hmm. and analyzing my day. I'm doing a reconciliation of my experience throughout the day. What brought laughter? What brought fear? What brought pain? What caused me to escape? Where did I feel you know, certain desires come upon me? Where did I feel like I felt a little bit of anxiety? What foods did I eat that worked with me that, you know, I didn't go to, I didn't want to fall asleep right after I ate them. Every mm -hmm. little thing, you know, you start evaluating them on an evening basis. You start retraining the retrograde systems of your body and mind so you can get into sync. Can you imagine if 50% of the population oh my God. started the doing this practice every single night for the next six months? Mm -hmm. Where would we be as a species, as a humanity? We're literally living the exact opposite of that. We're escaping every time to not be silent, to not sit with ourselves, to not look at ourselves, to not evaluate ourselves. And that is leading towards decay, oxidation, anger, you know, all the different things, the stagnation energy. Stored emotions. Stored emotions. your actions and behaviors, yeah. What do you do when you're in that state of mind where you're frustrated, angry, and sad? You're, you're looking for drama, you're causing drama, you're reaching for things that aren't good for you, you're trying to plug the holes just so you can stay sane. And so I'm not saying this to, to blame anyone, I get it. If you don't have those practices in place, you haven't built them from an early age, you're kind of left defenseless mm -hmm. and you're looking for ways to just buy time. That's why the entertainment industry <laughs> is so powerful. Yeah, absolutely. You know, just think about, and I don't have anything against movies and sports and all the things, music, they're, they're fantastic in so many ways but they're really, really blurring the lines of our purpose here oh, for sure. and taking yeah. us out of our dharma, our God-given choice to choose life and be part of something greater than ourselves. It's part of illusion, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I really love that you kind of hovered on that. Right now I'm doing my master's in quantum healing. Yes. And I'm reading, I'm reading Biology of Belief right now. Oh, great Again. book. Yeah, and I was sitting with my son last night and there is a portion of the book where they talk about someone's ability to heal themselves, mm -hmm. right? Just by sitting with this gratitude practice. Yeah. And I think that what you're doing is really, it's your course correcting. You're course correcting the potential damage that could have been done with you, for, to you that day from everything that you're consuming or right. digesting, right? right. Yeah. yeah. And I know our listeners are going to know then, what are your non-negotiables then to start the day? I have many, um, but you know they kind of change with the seasons, mm -hmm. right? Great, and it's As also they the, should. yeah, exactly that. What you just said right there was poignant, and they should. <laughs> so again, in my t in my personal belief systems, rigidity creates suffering, mm -hmm. and suffering leads to decay, and it and you can experience that on a mental, emotional, physical level. And so, you know, I do have my non negotiables. You know, usually, you know, we live in a crazy, high paced world. And uh, we're doing a lot right now as far as our movement's concerned. Um, but, you know, going to sleep at the right time, not going to sleep with a full mm. tummy of food, trying to break it down. I'm usually stop my eating around 4.30, 5 p.m., depending mm -hmm. on what season we're in. 
you know, I'm, um, I'm definitely very critical of my, you know, my, my light systems and my energy systems around that, you know, what's affecting how the electrical body works. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm more of a electrical person before a chemical person. Yeah, it begins with okay. that chemicals take response from the light. Mm -hmm. And so I've always been big on, you know, what lights are around me, what energies around me, things of that nature. Um, it's allowing me to go into part of the deepest alchemy of being human, which is our sleep mode. You know, mm -hmm. sleep is so forgotten in so many ways. And I know that it's picking up traction again and, and there's value around it, but there's a, a part of sleep that's not being considered, which is, you know, the experience of tapping into those waste streams of intelligence. You know, the, DM, sure. the DMT portals <clears throat> of tryptamines that are being converted in the brain from the pineal gland yeah. and the activation of the dream state and the right rapid eye movement into the deep sleep stages. And so I'm a big Ayurveda um, I would say almost, um, you know, mm -hmm. expander in my thought systems. And the Ayurvedics knew that the body detoxifies through the sleep process. There's a very strategic ley line that happens throughout the body, a system yes. that happens from the liver to the gallbladder to the kidneys, then to the blood, then to the lungs, the glymphatic system. They all have a really important process. And if you're skipping that because you're eating late, or you're not activating the nervous system, um, you know, you're activating photoreceptors in your eye with certain nanometers of light, mainly blue light and not artificial light, those things don't get activated. Mm -hmm. And if those don't get activated, you're building metabolic waste systems and it's increasing every single day and your body's becoming very acidic. Yeah. And then you throw in the fact that you're not dreaming properly, and all those things, now you're not processing information and waves and things of that nature. So that's a really big part of my ritual. And interesting enough, your sleep hygiene begins on the rise, mm -hmm. right? You know, first not, thing in the morning, yeah. First thing on the rise, not getting up from an alarm, yeah. getting your feet on the earth, getting sunlight on your body, drinking a little bit of salt water, you know, getting molecular hydrogen. One of the reasons why we brought molecular hydrogen to symbiotica was specifically for that rise mm -hmm. getting that high octane super small antioxidant into the body after you know waking up acidic no matter what you do you know you're, you've been laying horizontal the entire night your body systems have stagnated through the detoxification process now it's time to hydrate now it's time to bring salts in now it's time to bring antioxidants in not yeah. a big caloric surpl surplus right just right. things that can push and create the electric streamline and so i wake up i get up i'm in the sun i'm drinking molecular hydrogen i'm on the earth Gratitude starts there. I start, I get into a squat position. Sometimes mm -hmm. I go into inversions. I get sunlight in my eye, the photoreceptors in my eye, so important. Absolutely. And then, um, you know, and then I really just call in like what my experience was in my dream state. And I journal, mm -hmm. oh, uh, I journal the dream. Of okay. course, dream interpretation, if you're into Carl Jung and the yeah. Jungarian philosophies, the dream portal is everything and i've made massive strides in my life in emotional intelligence mm -hmm. um you know not being compulsive in my behavior really being able to regulate desires and needs and wants and understand where they're coming from just by just by understanding the dream portal right and that's a that's an offering that i'm giving myself and i always say this in all the interviews and all the lectures and all the experiences that i have mm -hmm. that this whole thing that we're talking about is an act of self-love absolutely it's the greatest uh. act of self-love me drinking molecular hydrogen in spring water and then having sheila g the cornerstone of ayurveda 30 minutes yes. later is the greatest act of self-love i can offer myself because i know what it is where it comes from and what it's doing as opposed yeah. to just hearing sound clips and all of a sudden wanting to be a herd mentality. Yeah, you know, the right whole in. thing like, um, you know, trying to ace a test in high school, you cram the night before. Memorize it all. Memorize yeah. it all. It never makes it into the nervous system, doesn't get into the cellular DNA network. So there's no imprint. Three days later, you'll flunk it. You won't even get one right. Mm. That's what we're doing right now with our health and wellness, oh, yeah. lifestyle, economics. Yeah foreign policy, awareness, land, environmental, every category is just surface. Mm -hmm. And because we're not penetrating deep, we're not able to get anywhere with it and we're not committing to anything. You so everybody's it. just running around with cliff notes. Now you throw in AI, you throw in technology, you throw in chat bots, all this kind of stuff. And we're getting, we're getting further and further away of becoming masters. And so 
that's um that's just big one, one part of it i digressed a little bit where have you been my whole life <laughs> <laughs> i've been right here we're soul family and i'm stoked that symbiotica brought us together seriously and that's a perfect example of you know doing what you love to do and being right. part of a solution yeah. selfless creates alliances mm -hmm. yeah so when we're talking a bit about my healing journey going back to the ashram the two biggest things people the first thing always want to tell me what do you eat when do you eat what supplements do you take and i'm like i did none of that there i learned how to love myself i shut down all the bullshit that was happening in my mind of all the things that i thought that i should be doing right and i aligned with nature yeah. every morning every night i was in her breathing her connecting with other people who were doing the exact same thing and it literally was like the circuit board that was just reconnecting and my mm. body came back into balance yeah and so you know shocker right shocker wow like we're not we're meant to be connecting to the emotion intelligence of nature you believe it or it. not mona you're actually made of nature yes your carbon from her. your calcium your copper, your mm -hmm. magnesium, your silica, your gold, there's gold in you. There's all okay. kinds of elements. We're actually made of the earth. Yeah. Just think how wild and crazy that is. We Absolutely. forget that. Yeah. yeah, sorry, sorry, keep going. No, not at all. And like, I'm hovering on this because I agree with you wholeheartedly. We're still in this system and I think wellness has become part of this checklist. Yeah. What's the protocol? What do I need to be doing? And so many people are becoming unrooted because of these ridiculous wellness protocols out there that they think they need to be following. Yeah. And I always say your perfect plan healing protocol should be as unique as your thumbprint. We're all different, nice. right? So yeah. if your ecosystem is completely different in mine, why are you going to this device every single morning to see how you should live your life? Right? Very well said, you know, and that's the the industrialization of everything creates separation anxiety mm -hmm. and separation anxiety, you know, really comes to the surface when you're trying to compare yourself to the next person. And most of the time who you're comparing yourself is full of shit. Absolutely. You know, it's not even yeah. real. They're suffering right? even. Totally. Yeah. And, and suffering what you resist you keep persisting right and so it just takes you down that train until you give up and crash and then you you go on a bender and bender could be defined as anything right it could mm -hmm. be you know fighting with your partner being miserable you know terrible food not getting sleep you too know too much caffeine too much too many caffeine. Tox toxic conversations relationships yeah. all of it there's so many ways to take you out of your alignment and your soul knows and then your soul is loathing itself and then that just takes you down more mm -hmm. and more rabbit holes and then you know you're kind of put into a position where you have to make a decision and a life choice mm -hmm. and so i think you know getting to rock bottom for a lot of people sometimes that's part of their karma they have mm -hmm. to experience that i've seen yeah. a lot of beauty come from the depths of darkness yeah you know i actually have that tattooed on my arm in ancient farsi which is a ancient zoroastrian passage is that mm -hmm. your deepest level of suffering and darkness is where the spark of illumination comes from right comforting yeah it's it's <laughs> it is comforting yeah. you know and, yeah. and that's part of the practice is you build and become flexible in stress mm -hmm. and i think that's a, a big part of why you know we take certain nutrients and put nutrients in our body why we're big on movement why it's important to get out into the ecosystems is because we got to create flexibility you know there's no such thing as perfection mm. that's something that comes path comes my way a lot like oh my god you're you're perfect and everything right. that you're doing and all that <laughs> and that's simply not the case yeah. you know i have my um i have my shadows mm -hmm. you know and i but i also find that within the shadow is a gift and that's something I, I deeply learned through my spiritual practice um i did a you know experience with richard rudd where we did a private retreat in abiso last year he created mm -hmm. the gene keys oh, and me and him combined yeah. our forces of um philosophy of freedom which is an anthroposophical wisdom philosophy of freedom with the 55th key of victimization where we are vaporizing that as we're going into a new morphogenic field and so when we talk about health and wellness and how we design products how we design our rituals we do it without the victim mentality and also where is the motive behind it mm -hmm. are we choosing it because we want to look a certain way and be affirmed a certain way or are we doing that for for more for ourself, our internal value, holding our soul in this life, and really pe reaching peak peak potential? Yeah, because that's kind of where I'm at right now. On my, you ask me what are my rituals, what are my non-negotiables? Well, where they all are rooted in is 
I want to see how far I can take my mind and body. Mm -hmm. I also don't want to, I'm not trying to live a thousand years. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just, I want to be here for a while and I want to be in my body mm -hmm. while I'm here. Mm -hmm. I know what is going on in healthcare. Yeah. I know the data points. I see what's happening in the disease models. Mm -hmm. I understand that we're leaving the health span into the disease span at a much earlier age. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in the argument that we're living longer, that, that therefore modern medicine is keeping us afloat. I, I don't believe in any of that. Keeping us alive on pharmaceutical drugs and machines and living in a certain capacity where we're a shell of ourselves is not living. It's actually a major burden Absolutely. to our life, burden to our family, and burden to the system. And so for, for me, it's like, where where can we get com take a common sense approach on practical living and getting more into an agrarian lifestyle, mm -hmm. which is you know kind of where I think we have to head. This whole industrial model that we're doing right now isn't working and we need to get more people fit and when i say fit i mean mind body and soul and i never was a darwin guy a charles darwin guy yeah. but now i'm starting to see that maybe there is a little bit of truth to one part of it which it is sur sur survival, survival of right. the fittest right. right it's yeah dependent right especially yeah. from we'll talk about the gut microbiome in a little bit but yep. like if you have a fit microbiome for example yeah you were part of the fittest. Anyways, we'll get to that in a second, but you brought up something important. You're a superhero with <laughs> a intact microbiome. Yeah. yeah. You're a superhero. Um, so for people listening, you know, we have these practices that cause us to feel uprooted every day. And industrialism is what it is. I think that we're going through this period of awakening, as some people are calling it, <clears throat> or remembering, I think is what it feels like. But um, it's also, it's acceleration. Yeah. And often when I go too much into acceleration, for me, there's stress. Mm -hmm. And I remember the feeling, I used to say that anxiety and stress were kind of like a learned behavior for me. Part of like how my childhood upbringing, it was always just very familiar. So I notice very quickly when I go back to traits of feeling uprooted. For you, you know, for people who think that you've got it all figured out, what are the things that cause you to feel uprooted? Great question. And I, I, it's interesting because you preluded to it. I think the speed consequence of our world right now yeah, is the major what? conflict that I'm having because the amount of information, the amount of communication speed where someone can touch you at any moment, no matter where they are in the world, mm -hmm. the response that you have to do when you're involved in a big movement, all the things, um, it's actually anti-human, mm -hmm. you know? It's not serving us as far as our soul's evolution and the epigenetic field. And so for me, that is the main struggle that I have is the pace at which I'm going at. And um, it it comes with a little bit of victim energy yeah. where sometimes I get into a victim, but but it also allows me to step into it and not feel sacrificial, but almost like I'm here. This is part of the, the story of my plot. And it's nothing is permanent. This is temporary and it's for a greater good. And because of that, it allows me to stay present where I'm not projecting down the line and trying to get out of it and feeling sorry for myself or anything mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I lost my father, um, you know, coming up on five years, feels like yesterday. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that experience, walking him through that and the subsequent timeline since um, hasn't, allowed me to properly i don't know if mourning is the right word but really feel into the grief of it yeah. and um my passion and my love for humanity and my love for people's health is you know has been dedicated to symbiotica mm. and mm -hmm. i always say how you do anything is how you do everything right and so literally with you know the rest of my symbiotica family we've built this entire legacy and experience um, based on that model. And that's allowed me to not stay in the grief for better, for worse. Mm -hmm. I literally hit the ground running full time. And so I, I do see um, pockets of struggle in that. And that's part of the human condition and part of the human process is the grief part. Mm -hmm. um, but the speed consequence of how we're moving right now and all the moving parts and technology and social media 
is probably my main struggle. I'm, uh, but I'm working on creating balance and harmony there. Mm -hmm. And one of them is doing things like this and meeting people and being able to talk about it because this is a form of therapy, you Absolutely. know, being able to offer and, and to someone that can reflect that back to you. And then ultimately, this is going to be seeded into a lot of viewers and people listening with their hearts open and Amen. stuff. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Was your father a spiritual teacher to you? Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was a wisdom was keeper. Your father too, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, my father was the definition of stoicism, mm -hmm. but with a child heart and a warm heart and a nurturer, he was. He held multiple containers for me. Mm. And it was uh, it was a real treat to have him for 37 years of my life and to really experience that level of unconditional love. And yeah. that has taught me so much in how um, I move and navigate, you know, my life. The empathy that was created through his level of empathy, um, you know, percolates through me in everyday conversations and experiences and decision making. Yeah. It sounds, what a beautiful relationship. Yeah. He did a good job. Yeah, thank you. Um, my dad, yeah, he would trick me. He would say, let's go for a run. And then he would talk to me about consciousness and egoism and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And something he would always say is, your body is just a vessel. And so I think from a really young age, I understood that there was more to it than just the physicality of healing. Yeah. There's a mental aspect, the emotional aspect, the spiritual aspect. For you, do you think that there's one that comes first? Or like, do you see the intersection between all of them? Yeah. Yeah, we're definitely renting these bodies. Yeah. You know, if you believe in God or you believe you have a soul within the body, then this is just a you know little blip in the radar. As Rumi says, I'll paraphrase, our lives are a drop in the ocean of time, mm -hmm. right? And so with that awareness, you don't get too attached to one thing or the other. I think that's the beauty, that's the harmony. And uh, I remember reading the Bhagavad Gita, when I was 13, I actually read it in reverse. There was a strategy behind that while doing the nine point death meditation, which was wow. an ancient Vedic perspective. Mm. I studied Vedic astrology and sciences at a very early age. And the Vedics believed in order to know who you are, you have to know where you are. Because mm. in order to know where who you are, you have to know where you're going. And so that's why they were so big on um, astrological charts and understanding where we are in the positioning. And so back to your question, it's I think it's a blend of them all. Mm -hmm. You know, if you get too hyper into the into the spiritual, you're leaving your body. If you're getting too much into the intellectual, you're lacking emotions and being able to fundamentally experience things. If you're too physical, then you're hardening the vessel and you're not opening yourself. It's that perfect mm -hmm. balance, finding harmony between both ethereal and material that gives us an opportunity to thrive and experience and to honor. Mm -hmm. And so for me, you know, physical is somewhere where we can always all go to mm -hmm. and it's definitely lacking. You know, our, the way we approach drinking water, the way we approach movement, the way we approach what supplements we're taking and why, what's our intention behind the supplements, you know, being our own detective and learning what's out there because the supplement space is the Wild West. Absolutely. Everyone's going after the pharmaceutical industry, but just look at the supplement industry. It might be worse. worse. Yep. Yeah, equally, it, they're at the same level. Yeah. Symbotica was literally built on that awareness mm. that we were going to trailblaze. We were going to do it right. We were going to be transparent with every single decision we make. We weren't, we weren't, we weren't going to be a margin based company. We were going to be a company that knows that we're going to build a broad audience. And by doing such, they have doing such, they have to trust us. Mm -hmm. And so we couldn't mess up in any way, shape or form. We weren't, we wouldn't have that. And so back to your question, you know, I think really getting honest mm -hmm. with yourself. You know, and that's part of the practice is like, maybe you need to go stand in the forest for 18 hours straight like a tree and see what happens, what comes up for you. Yeah. Maybe you need to do a Vipassana and go into a silent meditation for 10 days. Maybe you need to stare in the mirror for 24 hours straight and mm -hmm. see what comes out. You know, there, there's so many different things that the, the ancient um, Babas mm -hmm. knew. Yeah. You know, they weren't crazy. You know, there was a reason why they had these rituals in place so they can discover the strategies that work for them. And so I think it's a I think it's a physical, mental, emotional, spiritual alchemy. 
that ha- all of them have to be respected. Mm-hmm. You know, like the Buddha, for example, right? The Buddha was obese <laughs> and was yeah. obliterated and probably was diabetic and had metabolic syndrome. Right. <laughs> you can go on and on. <laughs> Visceral fat, which yeah, is a toxic that. burden, right? That's because the Buddha, you know, this is all an illusion. Yeah. and separated himself from the body, yeah. right? Yeah. And so there's there's all these different, you know, metaphors embedded into everything. Mm-hmm. And can you see things outside of just what the optics are showing you? Because mm-hmm. there's so much to be revealed behind the surface. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and I really believe that healing has to start with your mind and your spirit. And when you were speaking about the Ayurvedic perspective of astrology, when you pull back at everything, it really gives you perspective on just how unique you are, right? Yeah. And so when I'm working with someone on their healing protocol, um, when I ask them, like, what's the most important emotion that you want to feel? Most people will say success, uh, achievement, recognition, um, you know, uh, accomplished, um, you know, I want to feel fit, affirmed. affirmed, yeah. Yeah. Not one person, or it takes a lot of people some time to get to peace, yeah. happiness, and joy. And I think that we just need to become more rooted and anchored in that yeah. so that everything else can work. Yeah. Otherwise, we're just going to continue to be caught in that maya or that illusion of what we think we should be doing instead of just remembering what we need to feel our best inside. I agree with you 10 billion percent. All that that you just talked about started in childhood. Yeah. It's, it's all, it's just, it's really how you were affirmed as a child, what, how you were rewarded, you know, how your family reacted to you by you crying nonstop, how, there, how they really offered you an emotional intelligence to be able to experience and honor you as opposed to like, you know, if a child's crying at age three or four, you know, some parents are going to try to do everything they can to, to figure it out and have them stop crying Mm. as opposed to holding a container and an ecosystem for them to really let them share what they're experiencing and and letting them know that they're safe to offer that you know what i mean so those things ignite a whole path of emotional intelligence it's really interesting no it's a screen yeah right yeah absolutely Baby cries and they're given a screen yeah yeah oh my god i had the the screen (laughs) and the plugging that with this radioactive device is so fascinating to me. It's gnarly, you know, yeah. and I really think about what's happening to us, um, you know, humanity wise and where we're heading with it. And mm-hmm. um, I have my perspectives. This is probably not the place to get into that, um, but I do, we should I, do go there. <laughs> we, I do a lot of lectures on this and some of the, um, some of the, you know, postulations of what's happening on an ethereal level and a material level of where mm. we're at today in society. It's it's a trip, it's trippy. My partner and CEO of Symbiotica, he's an old friend of mine. I've okay. known him since we were 15. We were wild kids together. Wow. And um, we have actually a really interesting uh, dynamic. Uh, we both have, we both share the same heart, but we approach things a little bit different, and which makes us really good at what we do. You know, he's probably the best top, entrepreneur I've ever met Mm. and his ability to make decisions and be strategic is just extraordinary. And then he'd probably say the same thing about me and what I do. Right. And that dynamic uh, makes us really, you know, capable. The partnership is just incredible. Along with the entire team, it just really creates this this living ecosystem of family and and, and tribe. And so um, he's got two beautiful daughters him and his uh, wife, Dorana, have created epic human beings. And um, my sister, and my sister is Iranian and her husband's Indian. And uh-huh. so they have two little ones, Arya and Rohan, beautiful. Uh-huh. Just think about their heritage and their culture and their bloodlines just intersecting. And and uh, Shahab's wife is uh, from Afghanistan. So it's a very interesting dynamic. And so for me, I feel it would be kind of ridiculous if I didn't have children. <laughs> um, because I had the best dad of all time. Right. And, I, teacher. and I've also had, um, I brought up Shaha because we've been very intimate over the last six, seven years, more than in our entire lives. And so I got to see his perspective of parenting mm. uh, over the last six years while, you know, his baby girls are becoming, going into adolescence from like age five to 11, something like that. 
And so um, I've had a lot of archetypes and energies around me that show that. And also because of the Waldorf method mm -hmm. and understanding children at the root of everything, um, it gives me a really you know powerful opportunity to do that. But uh, we'll we'll see. You know, I, yeah. yet it's yet to be revealed. Yes, I yeah. love that you said that. And I know you speak a lot just around like the imprinting that's happening with children today. Mm -hmm. For my generation, I know a lot of my imbalances that accumulated over the years. Like I was one of the kids that was on antibiotics from yes. two till 13 until my mom found Dr. Andrew Weil. And then we found a functional medicine doctor and everything changed. Yeah. And today, you know, I think while there's awareness around lower toxins and, you know, healthy and unhealthy food, now there's this rage around, you know, ultra processed foods for kids. Yeah. And there's so many more levels to it. And it is overwhelming. Like this is when a lot of people are moving into freeze because we just, we don't know where to start. Yeah, good point. And when we get to just how our children are being brought up, like before uh, we started talking, I was talking about just dropping my kids off at school every day. We're in California. There's a lot of outdoors that they get to be around, but they're going into these institutions where I know there's toxins in the room. They're in these like cubicle style, sterile rooms on these insanely hard chairs. And um, last year, the teacher would say to me, you know, he's always just looking at the clock. Yeah. And I was like, well, wouldn't you be looking at the clock? They're sitting in this hard chair in front of people, you know, trying to learn when he just wants to be outside learning. Yeah. Right. And so you mentioned the Waldorf method. And I wish they were more accessible. I wish there was more media around them. I wish there was a push towards getting children to play. I think that we're let's not wish. Them. Let's, let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Let's, let's put our feet in the earth and say let's we're making Absolutely. a strong position on this and let's let's talk about these things yeah. i'm very very passionate about what you just said right now i've i've actually done many lectures specifically around wow. what you just said i was that kid that could not sit in this chair that the principal was calling my parents and saying we can't keep him in his chair this is when i was seven or eight wow. because i wasn't supposed to be waking up at 6 30 a.m to get ready for to, school to go sit in a chair to learn regurgitated drivel that meant absolutely yeah. nothing, nothing under fluorescent light bulbs I was supposed to be climbing trees, getting direct observation of nature, learning from cultivated people that were in their passion, mm -hmm. planting food, understanding soil health, understanding microbiotics. Getting un dirty. Getting dirty, <laughs> getting things that activate intrinsic factors so my body can absorb B vitamins. I mean, the, yeah, it, it, the yeah. list goes on and on. We are so off course in everything. Now, I'm not saying I'm against higher learning and educate, so certain educational systems. No, it doesn't have to be that extreme. But the fundamental way that our school systems are operating today in the Western world is an abomination. Mm -hmm. And I'll say that clearly. And mm -hmm. it's denaturing the human embodiment and souls aren't, aren't fully incarnating into their artistic touch, into their poetic touch. And what was good for you might not be good for me. Mm -hmm. We all have different unique experiences. Ask parents that have two kids and they're two completely different people mm -hmm. because they have a different design. Mm -hmm. And so this like conveyor belt or putting everyone in a box and then having them compete and then you know from uninspired teachers is just it's a it's a disaster no wonder we're in the state of affairs we're in right now it's not, it's not rocket science yeah and i think that what has to happen to your point is you know i don't know about you but when i talk about these things when i post about like goldfish crackers or some foods that i refuse mm -hmm. to give my kids the the pushback that i get from parents it's like they're they feel like they're, they're angry they're angry because yeah. I'm telling them that they're doing something wrong when it all comes down to choices. Yeah. And I don't know, like if I were you, if you look at all the things that are making you frustrated, get angry. Like, let's just get angry first so that we instigate more change. We're talking about this a little bit more. Then change, change can happen at like a dynamic level a lot faster. I think we're all ready for it. This is the hundred monkey effect. Mm. You get enough people activate and all of a sudden it becomes a worldwide phenomenon on yeah. its psychic or energetic or even technological f foundation. You're right. The suppression is real. And of course, you saying certain things like that, it's going to activate their demons. It's mm -hmm. going to activate their parasites in the body. It's going to mm -hmm. activate certain things that point. have a specific energy signature and they're going to be miserable and they're going to hate you mm -hmm. because you're the perfect mirror for their problems. And that is a real thing. I, I, I've been dealing with that for my whole, whole life. Wow. You know, they're, it's interesting. I had a lot of parents, uh, friends' parents that were so attracted to me energetically, they just couldn't get enough of me. Yeah. And there were some parents that couldn't even be around me. 
And I notice that when I'm walking around in farmer's markets or I'm out in the grocery store, yeah. or if I'm out there, there's certain people that just can't get away from me and just need to talk to me yeah. and want to be in my presence. And certain people run from me because mm -hmm. we all have a toroidal field. There's an energy signature, right? Yeah. And the, the DNA laws of resonance is a real thing. This has been studied and tested. And so we all have that. And so I think to you know revert back to what you're saying is that there has to be a a, a titanic reset this like shift of consciousness we're going through the age of aquarius we're leave, mm -hmm. leaving the kali yuga whatever it is no there's no way if we really want to change that where we're heading because we're going towards a cliff with no bricks right now mm -hmm. in my opinion that's every generation is getting worse Absolutely. we don't we don't understand our microbiome we don't understand how gut health works we're, we're running for a fit fix solution you're right we're in freeze we're either running hiding or freezing the vagus nerve is completely destroyed dysfunctional mm -hmm. so that's the cranial nerve that runs from you know top cranium down to your lower intestines which is part of our entire being which controls and governs our microbiome along with many other things including your heart rate heart electric valve all those things i can go on and on and on yeah. it's just yeah. it's like it's actually once you start understanding like the laws of it, mm -hmm. it becomes common sense. For sure. Right. And it is common sense when you break it down that way. Yeah. And the reason why, you know, we go back to talking about children, we're working so hard to implement change for ourselves. But I know, talk to any adult, if we could make change for our children in the future, we will fight so much harder so that they don't have to suffer. And that's really what this comes down to, right? So even something, let's go to the gut microbiome now, yeah. right? We don't know the impact of EMFs. We don't know the impact of all this electrical cars, of the medications, of the maybe even peptides, I don't know. We don't know the impact of all tap these- Tap water. Tap water, artificial foods and yeah. flavors, GMO. There's so much, like you said. I think we do know the effect. Right, yeah. Let's, re point. let's reframe that. We do know the effect. We know the effect. <laughs> we know what that's doing. We yeah. know that it's demoralizing, deteriorating, it's denting the perfect unique balance, the intelligence of what the microbiome is. Mm -hmm. And it's so, it's it's the new, it's the new frontier, it's the universe. Mm -hmm. This whole thing of like going to Mars and all that kind of stuff, dude, what the hell are you talking about? Go internally. internally. The universe is so profound within. And if people would just take the time to see that, they would then start the impl implementations of doing what's good for them. Mm -hmm. And it's beyond just probiotics. It's it's a process of understanding how to detoxify the body. I really think that most of the autoimmune conditions, and I, I hate that phrase, autoimmune, because yeah. it's, it's yeah. such a catchphrase. And it, it takes you away from what's really happening is just a toxic load or a toxic burden on the body. The reason why the body, Hashimoto's, is attacking the thyroid is because they sense toxins in there. Yeah. And the vagus nerve is uncommunicative. So the pituitary, hypothalamus, all of those things are not sinking properly. And now you're building out all these different attack systems. And then you have an inflammatory spike, your tumor necrosis factor spikes, and all of a sudden it's an internal battle. And now you're just reaching for something to get you through the day yeah, and you're deteriorating yeah. and deteriorating your, your system's falling apart and you're oxidizing at a fast rate yeah and your body's not attacking itself it's trying to keep you alive that's like, right what a freaking miracle I know. is that right yeah so when you think about inflammation to the gut obviously yeah. all the things that we've talked about but on like a macro level what do you th how do you describe gut inflammation first of all um i would say majority of the population is dealing with some form of dysbiosis in the gut Mm -hmm. like some form and that and there's many forms but ultimately you know the, the main thing is that you are having a direct interwovenness of not having a balance of the non-mammalian cells that are part of the tight junction and the digestion process in the gi tract and that's all the way up not just in the you know stomach wall or in the large intestines but goes down into the colon right and so if you're not having the the perfect pH balance, um, energy systems weaving together, then you can't properly digest food. Mm -hmm. If you can't properly digest food, then you're not obviously utilizing energy and nutrition properly. So now you're all you're already behind the gun. And if you're not digesting them properly, now you're feeding other things the wrong the wrong things. All this other information and energy. Mm -hmm. Now you have a, a system that is leaching toxic loads through the tight junctions, the epithelial layer, into the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. The bloodstream then all of a sudden 
is now all the alarm bell bells are going off and it's setting sending signals through growth factors, white blood cells, natural killer cells, uh, cytokine storms, all of those things. And now you're having allergies to food, mm -hmm. right? It's and, and in that process, in that turmoil, you're suffering emotionally. Mm -hmm. You're having deep, deep problems and your empathy goes out the window, your anger goes goes up, your stress levels goes up, your cortisols go up. And this microbiome is all the way from the bottom all the way up to the mouth, mm, right? Yeah. So the actual, to be honest with you, the, the microbiome begins in the mouth. Mm -hmm. Everything, that's the root cause. Everything flows downstream. It make, it's a perfect alchemy. That's why, you know, people that are chewing gum all day long or they're just putting weird stuff in their mouth oh and their yeah. their fingers are in their mouth all day long, they're really causing issues. And if your oral care and your oral health is not there, you're really causing yourself a whole a whole list of suffering. Do you know Lydia Roman? She's my dentist. Oh, very She's one of my dentists. <laughs> she, she actually reached out to me and I introduced her to my best friend, uh, Dr. Valerie Cantor. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Val is, a, in my opinion, is a top biodentist in the world. She's an endodontist, okay. and she's she's yeah. you know she's the biodentist of the stars. Um, she's been with she's traveled the world with me. We're, we've sat in ceremony together. Mm -hmm. You know she's my soul soul family, and uh, I introduced them to. Wow. And so we're we're family. My mom sees Dr. Lydia. I mean we're her brother. You know, they're they're all all family, and so find a dentist that talks to you about your digestion when you go to see them for a cleaning. <laughs> I know <laughs> what, what again, shocker. Yeah, yeah like yeah. like the the allopathic perspective on health is has to fall apart because it's not working. Mm -hmm. And I also being in my position with Symbiotica, I'm also getting fielded from holistic people allopathic mm -hmm. solutions, even though it's from, you know, a nutritional supplement or, or something like that, that's still not the way right. you got to understand the entire balance. That's when all of these start to work. Yeah. Because yeah. now you have an intelligence, and you understand our reasons for developing products this way. Mm -hmm. There's a rhyme and reason and a strategy behind all of this. There's a reason why we used a fermented form of cassava to create a liposome mm -hmm. for the vitamin C and combine it with phosphatidylcholine and phospholipids in certain aspects. There's a reason why we did that. Mm -hmm. If you don't know why we did that, then you're not understanding the full Monty of what that experience could be and what it could do for you. And so it's the same thing with the microbiome. It's food combinations are really important for me. Digestive enzymes, understanding how enzymes work, um, and really getting your toxic load down. H. pylori, candida, bacteria, all the things, these are causing massive turmoil and alkaline spikes in the mm -hmm. gut. Oh gosh. Yeah. We need to be acidic <laughs> in the gut. This whole alkaline, drinking alkaline water, water all day long, yeah. Yeah, electrolyzed water, just there, there's so many things that, we just have to snap out of it. Electrolyte water? Not a fan. Not a fan. No, like like yeah, I'm not a fan. I'm I'm a fan of spring water. Yeah, same. Yeah, I'm a big spring water guy. I'm a spring water hunter. I've traveled the world hunting springs. So right now everyone's fasting like crazy and using electrolyte water daily to yeah. extend their fasts. No, just drink spring water and throw some molecular hydrogen in it right. and maybe a teaspoon of Celtic sea salt. Right. Or better yet, Icelandic sea salt, which we're bringing to Symbiotica. Beautiful. Yeah. We're gonna dive in. I'm such a fan of Symbiotica because I know that you took the digestive process into mind. Not only that, the energy behind the brand, yep. but just to close off on this digestion piece, I think that optimizing digestion has to be pillar one for health. Yes. And I was studying this morning, You know, leaky gut leading to endotoxemia mm -hmm. is now proven to be the root cause of things like type two diabetes, um, metabolic dysfunction, possibly things like cancer, cardiovascular disorders, and like the rates that these diseases are now rising despite living in this era of hyper wellness is just obscene. And I met with a, um, a GI doctor. He literally, he didn't know what I did for a living. He didn't know I was a nutritionist. He literally said, don't believe everything you read online. Like, you know, leaky gut, meh. Like it wasn't a thing. That's unbelievable. It's unreal. It's unbelievable that we've actually gotten to this point. And I do feel um, an obligation through empathy to really bring this to the forefront. Yeah. Uh, one of my best friends, Dr. Zach Bush, mm. we've gone on many excursions together. This is you know what we talk about. Um, we go really deep into cultivating a unique formula that works for you mm -hmm. for proper gut health and digestive health and how 
getting into that level of thinking and awareness can literally create a new revolution in your life and a new outlook on your life. Mm -hmm. Every single thought and emotion and neurotransmitter from anandamide to serotonin to dopamine to acetylcholine, it all starts mm -hmm. in the gut and the GI tract. And it's so beyond just probiotics and stuff like that. It's really getting into foundational eating, fermented foods, antioxidants, detoxification, supporting the liver and gallbladder. I mean, we could do a five-hour lecture For on sure. the liver, just yes. what the liver means yeah. and and what the liver embodies and all the things that you just said from insulin resistance and all, all these different things. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, to, to make it short and sweet and give you a quick crash course is um, get intentional with your lifestyle. Be very aware of your triggers. You know, if you're getting eczema and skin rashes, if you're bloated, if your hair is brittle, if you're getting a regular heartbeat constantly, just see if that's revolving around your diet and nutrition. Mm -hmm. And maybe you just need to change things up a little bit. I think the word, um, you know, dysregulation is something that we need to address. Yep. Because what I'm noticing is a lot of people are just, they're, we're continuing to throw things down the hatch instead of recognizing that our bodies can well, naturally sir. heal themselves, right? Yeah. And I know that this is part of your inspiration for creating Symbiotica. You're looking at specific ingredients, how they come from nature and how they can work synergistically within our body and how your supplements work together. That's right. Like your formulations are very unique and very special. Right, a lot of people don't understand that when they when they take a vitamin or a mineral in its singularity, you're not going to have the absorption that your body needs. Right. So not only the absorption, you're you're creating a histamine response most likely because <laughs> isolated stuff is not how nature created. Yeah. Symbiotica products are food based products. We are the leader in liposomal technology and creating products that are super bioavailable, nutrient rich. They're filled with polyphenols, minerals, fats, antioxidants, vitamins, all the things that make it food. Mm -hmm. You know, we shouldn't be supplementing. We should be getting all our nutrition from our garden, from the yeah. topsoil, from the proper hydrological cycle, from highly mineralized biodynamic foods. But the world right now currently is shot. Mm -hmm. Unless you've curated and done regenerative agriculture and you're building a legacy farm and you're living off that farm, you don't really have access to some of those things. And so the, what Symbiotica was created to to literally bring biodynamic perspective of soil science and orthomolecular medicine mm -hmm. to the forefront in at the supplementation process and really make it so you're really like tasting and feeling and creating the essence around actually having the fruit or the food. Yeah. Our flavor compounds, our flavor systems, our preservative systems, take a look at them. Mm -hmm. We don't use any natural Nothing. flavors. No. We don't use any artificial. We don't use any of that. We don't hide under the guise of all these different things. You recognize every ingredient. Every ingredient. Yeah. And we work our tail off on creating stability situations so these things work. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is a team of people around this every single day and we get better and better and better and these things are almost made to order because these aren't things that are sitting around for three years on a shelf yeah. these things are literally you know if you have a symbiotic product are you getting it from you know your local grocery store wherever you're getting this thing's probably made in the last three four months mm, that is beautiful. very because because they're live nutrients mm. and that was so important for us it was important for me out the gate to make sure that we did not miss on that and that's why you know that's why our our customer base, our clientele, our family is growing at the rate that they're growing. And we're, we have the most loyal customer base in the supplement space. I can say that right yeah. now because I understand the dynamics and the data points. Mm. That says something. You know, people and, and mothers coming up to me on the street and thanking just you. <laughs> thanking me and saying, wow, you know, you guys have changed my life. You've changed the way that my child's communicating right now because all of a sudden they're getting methylated B vitamins and they thought they were on the spectrum, but they weren't. They just had the MTHFR gene mutation. Yeah, right. And so they needed methylated B compacts or now, you know, they're on, you know, our reduced glutathione with PQQ, CoQ10 and a liposomal matrix. Mm. That product mm. in itself hasn't is not being sulfurated. It's not oxidized. That's why you don't smell sulfur when you take it. Mm. You want it to sulfurate in the body. That's what creates the, the detox pathways to open up and allows that to chelate heavy metals and molds and fung fungus and parasites out of the body. Mm. I, I, that glutathione I can't get enough of because it puts me in a level of clarity because I know what it is. Mm -hmm. I feel how it works and I love taking it. And because it tastes so good, so good. Yeah. it creates yeah. the the 
we're getting a leptic experience. It's a little bit different than just taking a capsule. Right. Right. We're not really designed to be taking capsules. Mm -hmm. We're designed to like have the nuance of the fruit or the experience. Yeah, it's a yeah. sensorial approach yeah, also, which I yeah, really feel. Yeah, stimuli, sensory. Yeah. So we're going to get into the supplement protocol. I hate, yeah. I almost hate that word. It's not even a It's not a protocol. protocol. No, there is no protocol. No, it's your immersive experience in foundational health. And you shouldn't need a protocol, no, right? right. It's like enhancing. You're enhancing. Yeah. So you talk a lot about detoxification. Mm -hmm. We live in a toxic world. Maybe this is why we're just meeting now. Um, I went through mold exposure. I've shared this so many times on the mm. show. But that was like... I feel like that was the second round of health issues that caused the demise of my health. I got too toxic burden. Genetically, I'm just not the best detoxifier also. Mm. And so <clears throat> I stepped into my, my Western medicine brain. Okay, well, I'm going to tackle this with a protocol and a protocol and a protocol until it goes away. Yeah. Did my, <clears throat> excuse me, did my lab testing, mold wasn't gone. It's like, okay, I'm doing protocol after protocol after protocol. What's going on here? I'm not detoxing. Like I wasn't getting the shit out of my body. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And uh, talk to us You're about- You're probably just churning it. You got it. Yeah. Recirculating. And I was yeah. putting a lot of good stuff in. Don't get me wrong. Of course. But if you're not clearing out what shouldn't be within you, right. chances are what you could have been accumulating prior to even- you know, coming into this world, right? Maybe in utero from pregnancy with your mother. For sure. If she had an amalgam in her mouth, yeah, you can go on right. and on. Yeah, of course. So talk to us about detoxification. When do we incorporate this? And I would love to also get your feedback. Did our ancestors detox? Did they prioritize detoxing? Absolutely. Were they going on detox protocols every single month? No. No, I don't think they were. I think they instinctively <laughs> knew. But thank yeah. you first for sharing all that. I think detoxification, and I learned this from my cousin, it might be more important than nutrition today yeah. in the world that we find ourselves in. That's a that's a heavy statement, right? And so when I look at it, I, I think first and foremost, what does detoxification mean to me? Well, you can't detoxify if your pathways are shut down, mm -hmm. number one. You also can't detoxify if every part of your GI tract is being turned on as well. So there has to be a little bit of a give and take there. And what I mean by that is fasting. Mm -hmm. Fasting is the ultimate form of detoxification along with breath work, right? We forget that when you breathe, you're exhausting gases that come out of the liver that are going in through the portal vein into the blood and breathing it out. That's what the whole thing with halitosis is. Yeah. Have you ever yeah. smelled that on oh, someone? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's, that's just, they're, they're overly toxified has nothing to do with mints in their mouth. Freshening your breath or a dental cleaning doesn't no, even work. No, it's, yeah. it's gnarly, gnarly gases. I won't even go through them. It's beyond just methane. These are things that are stewing through the, through the organ system, going through the portal vein and being exhausted out of the alveoli, wow. which is where we're supposed to be transferring oxygen and uh, through the iron exchange. It's so fascinating. What is that doing to the body and to the mind and the spirit is decaying it. So I think fasting begins with turning things off and going into autophagy. Mm. Autophagy is the Greek word for eating thyself, self-cannibalism. And I've done long bouted fast before, and that allows my body to go in there and eat up things like a rotor rooter and stuff like that. I personally do fasting now um, with our non-caloric stuff. Like I do molecular hydrogen and shilajit and our inflammatory formula. Those are the perfect compounds to use while in a fast for a number of reasons. With molecular hydrogen, you have the smallest antioxidant in the world, first one on the periodic table, and it's mm. activating the endogenous production of glutathione, peroxidase, superoxidase, dismutase, all of those things that are needed for pushing out toxins at the cellular level through the Krebs cycle, right? right. Which is a very important process that, you know, methylfolate is part of that Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle is the citric acid cycle. It's how our cells determine which cells to detoxify, which ones to have cellular program death, which we call apoptosis, mm -hmm. and which ones you know that don't need any, any help at that moment. That's a very important aspect. You can be doing all the teas and green juices, but if your cells don't have access to that level of technology or information, you're just creating more of a burden, more of a burden, and it really starts to build up. Um, really important for detoxification is we're going into a, also an immunosenescent state. Mm -hmm. You're familiar with senescence, yeah. right? Yeah. So senescence means senile. It means that you have zombie cells mm -hmm. and parts of your body are just not responding to stimuli and information anymore. And there's a number of reasons why that happened. One of it's a major toxic load 
The other one is you have a major deficiency to magnesium. Mm. You know how they say, I got 99 problems, magnesium solved 95 <laughs> of them. It's so interesting. Like magnesium has become this catch thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. But what, what is magnesium? Like magnesium is an earth mineral which we're not getting. Which we're not getting. We're deficient in it. We're not eating raw cacao all day long. It's not in our greens anymore. It's it's just, it's gone. Yeah. And so if you're not getting magnesium, magnesium has a very unique subatomic charge, just like copper has a subatomic charge. And copper is critical, by the way. We can go into the whole thing on copper. That's how our body detoxifies and generates ATP. Mm -hmm. But without magnesium, your cells can't communicate. They literally, magnesium creates the ionic channel for cells to communicate what to do. That's why it's considered an anti-stress mineral because when your body's under a lot of stress, it needs to communicate pathways. So if you're deficient in magnesium, all of a sudden you're having breakdowns and you're, you're building up more stress and more tension. And so, so why magnesium three and eight, not to cut you off, yeah. but just hover on that while you launch with that specifically. Well, we went with three and eight out the gate. We're actually, you know, we're actually doing some really cool stuff in the very near future, which I'm not sure if I'll get into, but yeah. we went with three and eight because the most deficient you are is mag in magnesium is in the brain. Mm -hmm. You're extremely deficient mm -hmm. in that. And three and eight is attached to a, to a compound that allows it to pass through to the brain at a very high clip. And so we, you know, we love that. We love that ability to cross the blood brain barrier and brain, the brain is so necessary because it's using almost X amount of voltage that almost more so than any body part in the body. You know, it's because just so much energy is being used on a cellular matrix. Do you know I've been taking it now? It's my seventh day. Yeah. All, also seven days of no caffeine, no withdrawal, no headache, no yeah. nothing. Like yeah. I've been so pleasantly surprised by this. So that's, yeah, I wanted to have her on that. That's a, that's a key metric that you pointed out. Caffeine is stimuli. It mm -hmm. puts you in the fight flight and you're creating such a deficit if you're if you're magnesium deficient mm, and so yeah, if, if right. you were if you didn't have magnesium going getting off that would have been a real problem you would yeah. have had migraines and headaches which okay. are all signals that something isn't being communicated properly so your body sends a pain signal and it's talking to you the, the the pains in our bodies is our nervous system trying to talk to you right but what yeah. do we do we put you know, duct tape over it and keep driving, keep driving. Our, our sports yeah. car when the body's <laughs> more infinitely stimulus. more valuable than any sports car, yeah. right? And so um, the, our topical magnesium, I really want to highlight that because there's nothing like that on the market. Mm -mm. I put it on my baby's bellies. Put it on your baby's belly. Good, <laughs> because because that's, you know, the, the purity of that product and the technology around that product and the fact that it's in Myron glass. Yeah. There's no other wow, magnesium beautiful. out there. Everything's sitting in plastic. Yeah. Get you know, oxidized. Yeah. How you do anything is how you do everything. Ours goes in Myron glass. Just our packaging alone on that product is more expensive in terms of material than any product altogether, just the packaging in itself, let alone what sits in there. And there is DMSO in there, dimethyl sulfoxide mm -hmm. at a perfect ratio. And most magnesium, topical magnesiums, they give you that itchiness because of the mm -hmm. vasodilation. Yeah. There's no residue on the skin whatsoever. None. Yeah. This is a transdermal applicator that it's like sitting in the Dead Sea and soaking up salt, uh, magnesium salt. I love that product and it's one of our fan favorites. And so we talk about detoxification, you know, they all go in alignment. You need to be mineralized to, to be able to detoxify. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're not mineralized, then the gnarly heavy metals make it into your body. You know, all the exhaust that's coming off everything, the residues everywhere, the lead, the cadmiums, the mercuries, the yeah. aluminums, whatever they're spraying everywhere, you know, all that stuff. That stuff starts to saturate in the body. That's why we're so big on shilajit. That's why we're so big on topical magnesium. That's why we're so big on our other magnesium is because it's displacement. We're, if there's nothing there that's holding the position, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden you're going to get flooded with the bad stuff. Okay, so first thing in the morning, wake up. Yep. Uh, we're going to do our shilajit first. I do molecular, molecular hydrogen, hydrogen first, on the rise with the rise. 20 to 30 ounces of spring water. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I'll do, I'll make myself a shilajit tea. Okay. Yep. Shilajit, as on you know. On its own, with hot water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with, with, hot, with warm water. Mm -hmm. I don't use scalding water. Shilajit is the cornerstone of Ayurveda. It yeah. literally means mover of mountains, mm -hmm. breaker of weakness. Yeah. And it was, you know, Mother Nature knew what it was doing. Is it a binder? It, bi it can bind to things that don't belong there. Right. It, it can work as a chelator to get toxic mm -hmm. materials out of the body. Absolutely. Beautiful. It's, it 
pushing the mitochondrial process. So it's electrifying. Mitochondria is the battery of every cell. Actually, to be honest with you, at the root of everything we're talking about is probably mitochondria. mitochondria. It's the yeah. electric body. Mm -hmm. And so all, sunbathing, getting on the earth, mineralizing, spring water, molecular hydrogen, these are all mitochondrial influencers and in activating the energy capacity of the cell. And this also goes into pro-aging, or let's say, let's just call it aging backwards. Right. If we can enhance our mitochondrial activity through products like these naturally, I'm just, I'm convinced that we don't have to buy into how we're going to age in the future. No, that, that's, that's old paradigm thinking. Yeah. We're, we're on the new wave right now. Yeah. And that is going back to the ancient alchemy, which mm -hmm. is interesting because we're talking about magnesium. We're talking about molecular hydrogen. We're talking about grounding to the earth. We're talking about sunlight and all those things. That's ancient stuff. Yeah, they We're not it. talking about weird synthetic things. So <laughs> I think that's what Somatica is doing. We're harnessing the ancient alchemy to a 21st century application. Maybe, I, maybe that needs to be our new pitch phrase. Can we're, you say that again? Let's just say that again. <laughs> we're harnessing ancient tested alchemy and bringing it into a 21st century model. We're not trying to interfere. We're not trying to deteriorate. We're not trying to improvise and, and make things weird. We're really just trying to harness mother nature so our body can respond to that beautiful, poetic intelligence. Do you know that that's my greatest wish for the future is exactly what you just said. And I love that you embody that into your brand. That's just magic. The symbiotic of lifestyle is real. Yeah. We honor mm. what we're doing it's the greatest gift we can honor it's why we talked about it before why we sacrifice so much why we're, we're you know we're working 20 hours a day mm -hmm. not getting sleep sometimes it's because it's just a, such a commitment to excellence yeah and yeah. this is this is a purpose-driven life yeah so let's close this that section off with the detoxifying then, right? Yep. So we're starting with our molecular hyd hydrogen. I'm going to do this. I'm going to just, let's create like a crusade of people trying let's this Let's do out. it. She legit first thing in the morning. We're going out into the sun. A lot of people are going to extend their fast. Yep. Are you fasting? You know, I have a feeling that you're just trusting your intuition for how long you need to fast. But for, you know, people who are listening, they've tried on fasting. Maybe they're going for 12 to 14 hours. Maybe some people have done a 24 or 36. Yep. Do you have a system by which you are listening to your body or when you extend your fast? Yes. So I, I intuitive fast. Um, I usually fast for as many days of how, what my age is. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the Essene philosophy. Um, I used to intermittent fast till 2 p.m. I've reversed that over the last two, three years. I break my fast around 10 a.m. 10 a.m. is my largest meal of my day. It's the most protein-rich meal of my, the day. Uh, for, uh, for all the beautiful women out there, that's probably the best thing for them for a number of reasons. Um, and then I start to, I, I eat like a king on the rise, and I start to eat like a beggar later on in the day. By four or five o'clock, I'm pretty much at my wit's end with food. Mm -hmm. And I'm going into the sleep cycle in a fasted state. Beautiful. And then so I have a 14 hour, 15 hour window of fasting. You covered everything that we are taught at the ashram also. So when we wake up first in the morning, thing in the morning, we have some hot herbal teas to cleanse the body. Mm -hmm. We go into yoga, but the yoga is an asana, it's breath work. That's mm. how we're detoxing. Yep. Uh, the asana practice is more, I would say, for like flexibility, but also emotional release. Yep. And then we break our fast at 10 o'clock with a, a large nutrient dense meal with high vibrational foods that come from the earth. And mm. it's like abundant in fiber and color and, yeah, you feel the energy from what you're consuming. Hallelujah. I and mean, that's the best time to do it. That's when your HCL, your hydrochloric acid and pepsin production and amylase and other uh, you know, endogenous enzymes are at their highest mm -hmm. is around that time. And that's why we want to have protein rich foods around that time. Absolutely. That's awesome. Movement is a big part of detoxification too. Yeah. Oh my Infrared gosh. sauna, yeah. inversions, rebounding, sprinting, high intensity interval training, walking. Uh, walking up hills, mm -hmm. Mo the movement is just right there is important with everything else, if not more. Stagnation leads to dis-ease, mm -hmm. and it's very important and critical that you're constantly moving. You're not sitting. You're not sitting in a chair. It's hard for me to sit. Like even sitting here, oh, I'm like, sure. okay, I, I got to do a backflip or run across the wall, <laughs> do some push-ups, we'll <laughs> squats. You know, every hour I'm doing 10, 15 squats. If I'm yeah. working with it, I'm, I'm doing squats, I'm doing push-ups. It's just you got to keep the furnace going and the and the movement going and the blood pumping. 
be the person at the office that normalizes the breaks every 45 minutes. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right, we're going to wrap this up. I want to talk about the liver health and the inflammatory health. Yeah. I know that that was out of stock for a while. So two essentials, right? Like we can go into the magic of the liver the next time you come back. Yeah. Um, but it's just one organ of ours that is like a superhero, it deserves attention. We don't think about it at all. These are two essential supplements, supplements in my mind. Tell us about them. The inflammatory health is just one of those products that we just haven't been able to keep in stock for a number of reasons. Everyone has inflammation. Everyone has inflammation, um, some form of inflammation. And let me be clear, inflammation is what makes us human. We're supposed to have inflammation, just like we're supposed to have reactions to things. Inflammatory response means that you have a healthy ecosystem, and but you're, it's supposed to spike. It's not supposed to stay dysregulated. Like, for example, if you sprain your ankle, mm -hmm. right? What happens right after you sprain your ankle? It swells up, right? Why is it swelling up? Because your body is rushing white blood cells, growth factors, blood, nutrients to that area to, to protect you. it, to heal it, and all those things. And what do we do? We put ice Isn't around it? it and constrict it and mm -hmm. constrict the vessels, which you're not supposed to do. Yes, it's going to help from swelling immediately, but you keep doing that, you're going to cause oxidative stress, damage, and permanent damage. Same thing with our immune system. Our immune system is supposed to be robust. It's supposed to be reactive and things like that, but it can't be left unguarded, dysregulated in low level stress. C-reactive proteins, an inflammatory response or inflammatory marker that shows that, Home, you know, blood homocysteine as well. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I really wanted to evaluate what, what raw materials, what bioactives out there can really curate, not turning it off, but to create dis the the recommunication of that dysregulated immune system and inflammatory system, yeah. and we went to town on this. There's no there's no other product in the world that comes close to our inflammatory health. I can say that comfortably, mm -hmm. um, just because I know what's in there and what is sourced in there. We have a compound in there called Nobiletin. Mm -hmm. Nobiletin. Every pharmaceutical drug company was trying to make it into a pharmaceutical drug. Wow. Yeah. Have you heard of Nobiletin? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. No Nobiletin comes from the mandarin orange skin. Yeah. skin. It's a polymethoxylated flavonoid, and it literally creates a communication between the nervous system and all the biochemical processes in the body to remember its job. And it does that at such a high clip. And we have Nobiletin in this inflammatory mm, formula. Incredible. But Find me another company that has Nobiletin in their inflammatory products. All of the companies out there are selling you, you know, different forms of curcuminoids or yeah, turmeric yeah. and, you know, uh, ginger rolls and stuff like that. We went with we went with Nobiletin in there. Nobody has that. We also have PEA in there. Remember the whole craze on mm -hmm, CBD? Mm -hmm. It was a race to the bottom in that industry. Right. In nobody, a form. Right. No, right. And nobody in an in, in isolated form. Mm -hmm. And we know that the entourage effect is really what's going to help the body's cell retrograde system go back to homeostasis. That's what cannabinoids do. They bring your body back from an inflammatory response back to homeostasis. That's what we want to do. Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing with inflammation. Inflammation sparks when needed, and then it goes back. If it doesn't go back, that means you're toxic. That means your body's communication's off. You don't have magnesium in your body, and you don't have the nutrient capabilities of doing stuff. That's why Ayurveda is so, so powerful. So pro yeah. powerful. And so we have PEA in there, which is stronger than CBD and CBG and CBN. And this attaches to the endocannabinoid system and it really calms the nervous system. Think of it like ice water over fire. Mm. We have PEA in there. We also have um, high octave uh, curcuminoids in there that are really good. This along with 12 other compounds creates a synergistic effect. And I have my mother on it. I have my aunt on it. I have all my <laughs> friends' moms on it. I have every athlete you can imagine that's on it right now. And again, this isn't about blocking the receptor sites. This is communicating with them and mm. letting them know what's going on so they start to remember how to properly work. Incredible. This is a game changer, an absolute game changer. I love it. You know, everyone's going to be able to go to your website and try out. I suggest everything. And the reason being is because I feel like you've taken a really synergistic approach to how the body needs to function living in our modern day world, uh, including when we talk about inflammation, whether you know you're dealing with something that's specifically, in, you know, inflammatory, stress, 
is the initial instigator of inflammation yep. and find me one person that doesn't have to deal with stress, right? So yep. go check them out. I believe the code's Mona Sharma. Uh, we're gonna link out everything below, but let's say if someone, if people are gonna go to your gorgeous site, they wanna try a handful of products, you know, what are the few that you recommend to get started? I mean, right out the gate, you know, our topical magnesium, our liposomal magnesium glutathione. <laughs> I'm like and, grabbing them all. Inflammatory, <laughs> I mean, I, th th these are, these are yeah, staples, yeah. Our, you know, our methyl B12. You know, we have a liposomal methyl B12 that has all three active forms of B12 in there, adenosylcobalamin, methylcobalamin, and hydroxocobalamin. Mm. Again, there's no company that does that. No. There's just nobody Nobody's has the courage to do so. Mm -hmm. Our D3K2 CoQ10 combo, we have both forms of K2 in there, the uh, meniquinin, which is MK7 and MK4. They're all they have, those for for women for right. mothers right. having both forms of K two in mm -hmm. your D three product, which is synergizing your immune system yeah. and it's bringing free floating calcium out of the bloodstream into the bones for women that are going through perimenopause, menopause, as we going age. into osteoporosis and all those things. I can age. go on and on for for jaw structure, teeth formation. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a I'm a Weston A Price guy. I'm very connected to that foundation. And he discovered Activator X, which is vitamin K2 today that we now call it. It's a fat soluble vitamin. We we you know we go f so far and beyond our Sheila G. Yeah. And wait till you see what's coming. I can't. You wait. You cannot believe what's coming <laughs> to Symbiotica. We're all in Symbiotica. I call it section 5.5 it's our new it's our new 5.5 section mm -hmm. we're going all in and it's it's just getting better and better i yeah. can't wait yep. as a practitioner it's just a brand that i that i trust yep. uh, and i truly believe that you are part of this paradigm shift that's like moving away from synthetic to waking up the intelligence of the body so i hope to have you back to talk about so many more i have a page of questions that i didn't even get to i cannot wait to have you back we could do this for days for days <laughs> and it's i'm just i'm really stoked that there's souls that are standing in their power and really you know, I don't want to curse right here, that really care yeah. about humanity. And it starts again with the embodiment. And yeah. what myself and the entire somatical organization is doing is we're really standing up for truth. Absolutely. And we're, we're an educational movement. We're not a supplement brand. No, not at all. You know, we're- There's an energy yeah. behind even looking and holding and using your products, I have to say. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's there's a signature behind everything. And and again, that's, you know, no, we, no. we want- your neighbor to tell you about us. We want that to be that word of mouth because it's word of experience. Mm -hmm. And we're an experiential company. This is experience. Yeah, don't take my word for it though. <laughs> Practice right. discernment, go ahead, look at our boxes, yeah. look at our labels, yeah. look at how we do everything and make the choice for yourself and, and attach it to your gut. Mm -hmm. Attach it to your gut and your instincts. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, can I take you through just some closing rapid fire questions? Bring it, let's Ready? go. All right, what are the most common mistakes or misconceptions that you're seeing women make with their health? I think chasing influencers out there and chasing what they're doing and thinking that they have the plan all in set. Most of those influencers are the same women that contact me behind closed doors and are struggling like you can't even believe. Wow. And that's a false illusion that creates false insecurity and creates frustration and pain. Mm -hmm. So they really just need to take it day by day and be a lot easier on themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, like really drop into like the softness and the gentleness and check in with yourself. Be, be thy doctor. That's the best thing I you can tell. You are your healer. Yeah, That's you what I are say all the time. You are your healer, yeah. and it's going to be a journey. You know, don't think that you need to get there tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Make it a beautiful process and document your experience uh, internally, and um, you know you're supported. The universe is supporting you. What's one way that women are making healing and health too complicated? I think it's on the lines of what I just said. Mm -hmm. um, I think you know trying to dissect individual things as opposed to looking at it as an entire complete package yeah. and really understanding that you know if you have endometriosis or you have you know you have psoriasis or you're having a hair issue or you're having this it's all related and it's all foundational to certain key things that you've either missed along the way or you're you know you're out of alignment with some behavioral patterns or emotional patterns mm -hmm. and so your emotional commitment to growing and creating foundational commitment 
um, to, to thyself and finding self-love will ultimately put you in the right category. Also food combinations, you know, yeah. getting locked up in the isms. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're so hardcore on an ism, you're not able to blend. I'm a self-proclaimed qualitarian. It says it right that. on my handle. <laughs> uh, it could be a re reflex, uh, flexitarian as well. Flexitarian, but yeah, I'm a flexitarian. You're a flexitarian, yeah. Yes. So quality foods. Qualitarian sounds lovely though. Do you like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I, I have a book on, on deck it's called Qualitarianism by Shervin. And so I think that's uh, that's part of the source code of getting back to your root self. And that goes for both men and women. What is your favorite ancient healing remedy? Ancient healing remedy. Well, outside this, of Shilajit. Outside of Shilajit. <laughs> well, obviously magnesium, mm -hmm. magnesium foot baths, topical magnesium. Um, you know, those are those are all remedies, but Outside of that, I like ozone. You know, mm. I'm a big ozone guy. Yeah, and so yeah. it's considered a, a, maybe a modern, modern modality, but ozone is part of our atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And so I've been using ozone for everything over the last 15 years of my life. I was the guy bubbling olive wow. oil. Yeah, my, my cousin taught me that. And I use that for topical stuff and all kinds of things. So oh. that's part of the ancient process. Also, you know, inversions. Mm -hmm. That is a that's a technology and a tool. We didn't talk about functional movement and chiropractic and mm. decompression of the spine. Those are just as important for as anything else that we talked about because that's how you breathe every day. Yes. If you're mouth breathing, like obviously I've probably did ten thousand words in this uh, conversation. This isn't typically how I should be um, right. acting. I should right. be doing four or five breaths a minute. Yeah which lowers cortisol, allows me to stay in parasympathetic, allows the nervous system to lock in. I've been doing that listening to you. Yeah, you've been doing that <laughs> listening, yeah. So I'm elevated right now. My heart rate's probably up. I'm probably under some stress. But as soon as we're done here, I'm going to go back to homeostasis. Yeah. There's a book called Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. Uh -huh. I highly recommend that book. I mean, just cool. think about it for a second. I'll give you the quick, quick notes on it. Zebras are sitting enjoying company they're eating grass they're in the serengeti in the middle of africa and in a split second they're going to have to trot at full speed mm -hmm. to make it away from you know five female lions that are going to eat them alive right and one of the gnarliest things ever yeah. and so all of a sudden they go from parasympathetic calm nervous system to adrenaline epinephrine heartbeat um, body temperature blood pressure sweating all of those things to survive from there, after the lions give chase, which they stop giving, ch they give chase, maybe not, they, they don't succeed maybe 90% of the time. Within five minutes, that zebra is completely back to balance. Mm, wow. All of those metrics are back to normal. Mm. HRV, everything, heart rate variability, which is yeah. another thing to talk about. All of those things are back to normal. Yet human beings are staying in the panic mode, the fight flight mode, 24 7 oh, yeah. even in the sleep state right right that's something to really consider and to do a reflection on of your lifestyle people do that every day in traffic traffic yeah. getting out of the house whatever it is it's just yeah. they're constantly you know what because they're not present mm -hmm. yeah. they're not present they're somewhere else yeah they're throwing social media you're, you're looking at a thousand different realities in the span of 30 minutes all the maya how could you be yeah all maya mm -hmm. so yeah Last one. Yeah. If you could leave our listeners with just one takeaway that you're most passionate about right now, what would it be? Oh my God, there's so many things streaming into you my head right now. You live an extraordinary life. <laughs> it's just, it's just uh, turn off the news, you know, go inward. I'm really passionate about that level of awareness. Really start to activate, you know, your, your own path. Don't get caught into the noise. Hmm. You know, there's a lot of weirdness happening right now. We're in really strange times. And yeah. so um, try to get out into nature, spend time with people you love. Um, look at your circle. Mm -hmm. You know, how is the, your circle impacting you? You know, the part of the philosophy of freedom is understanding where, where every decision is being made. Right. Are you truly making that decision? Or is it something outside of you that is giving you the motive for that decision? And before all of this is your freedom. Mm. And freedom is not a matter of being in jail. Yeah. Freedom is being in your body, in your health, in your chosen life, mm -hmm. because this life's so short. And every single moment that you're not in it is a complete disaster to your experience and to your soul. And your soul knows it. Yeah. Yep. And you're not alone. 
You're not alone. Yeah. Every day, I think that we have the choice to either see the darkness that is pervasive everywhere and that acceleration that we talked about, or the fact that there is beauty in this human experience. Sure. And, you know, I'm pretty selective of a lot of the people that I follow. And I just want to like thank you from my heart. I hope you feel this. You're such a reflection of reminding us mm. of the beauty that exists as we have to coexist through all this to make it to wherever we're going. So thank you for being that reflection to everyone. No, yeah. that's the greatest honor I could receive. This is what gets me going. Great. I yeah. can't wait to have you back. Yeah, me too. Thanks thank for you. being here. Of course. Thank <laughs> you.